Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. If you thought that our sofa sessions about Belgian quadruples was a struggle, you've got another thing coming. Johnny, what are you doing to me here? What I'm, is this? I'm making your life better, but instantly forgettable. Bla blackout drunk forgettable. Blackout drunk forgettable. It's Imperial Stouts. So it's not just any Imperial Stout video, we've got another one of those coming. This one is about specifically whiskey aged mm -hmm. Imperial Stouts. So what we've got in front of us are three beers from three different kinds of barrel. Oh. With three different recipes for the beers and for the whiskies that went in them. Wow. So I thought we'd look at how uh, a bourbon, an Irish and a Scottish cask would influence a beer. How nerdy is that? That is super nerdy mate. <laughs> Thanks buddy. So quickly, the basics of whiskey is that it's made much like a beer. So you have a mash, yes, uh, exactly the same as in beer. Hot water goes into a bed of cereal. And then after that, they ferment it with a yeast, a house yeast usually. And then once they've got what is essentially a beer with no hops, they distill it. So they raise the alcohol right up by distillation and then put it in barrels. Yeah, okay. So the first thing is we've got Scotch, we've got Irish, and we've got, well, a couple of different Americans, but we're going for bourbon. Yes. So the difference is between these three, a bourbon has to have 51% corn in its mash bill. There we go, I okay. didn't know that. Uh, a Scotch, I believe, has to be 100% barley. Mm -hmm. uh, and an Irish one can be almost whatever it wants. So Irish whiskey tends to vary. A, bit a mutt. The second thing we need to remember is that uh, they're all aged in oak. Okay. Different oak, European oak and American oak. And American mm. white oak has certain properties and European oak has it's certain white. properties. Uh, whiter? I mean, oak white, is not white. It's not very white, no, is it? No, no. But it's, it's kind of oak. White colored. should be whiter oak. So we'll start in Scotland. 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 Scotland with some scotch. Nailed it. We'll, we'll stop, stop the Scottish accents. And we'll start uh, with this lovely thing, which is Ola Dube uh, from Harvey's Tune. Yes. Uh, so they have a beer called Engine Oil, uh, which they've aged in Highland whiskey casks. Oh, okay. Just take the skirt off. Uh, there we go. So this beer is actually not as alcoholic as the others. It's only eight point. You just 8. had to look 0. up the kill there. I did. I did. Oh, look at that. Oh Blimey. my god, what is this? It is like engine oil. That is some serious dark matter right there. So it's only 8%, so don't be scared of this one. Not a lot of carbonation, not a lot of head. Wow. But what we're going to look for, we're going to try and find what's specifically scotch what is, about what, what they've what? added to this dark roasty beer. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's porty, isn't it, for mm. starts. I mean, the first thing you notice is it's not a peaty whiskey. No. So there are whiskies uh, in, in the, uh, like the Islays and those, yeah. those kind of distilleries that make, uh, make their mash with peated malt. Yeah, all the like single so, earthy, malt yeah. uh, island, like you're saying, like the Hebridean yeah. sort of jazz. Whereas this one's got a kind of, a kind of uh, like gingerbread kind of thing to it. Yeah, yeah, it has sort of a biscuity. Um, yeah, mm. a spice, a ginger spiciness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and but also lots of uh, there's there's plenty of oak there, but it's 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 all quite sweet and raisiny, gingerbready, oaky. Yeah. That's what's been yeah. added by the Highland casks. Ooh. Whoa! Wow! There's loads of oak on the actual. Yeah. Really dry around the, the the your gills, your chops. Yeah, chops. Yeah, that makes slightly more sense. But it, it's still it's still quite sweet. There's no bitterness left. No, that's all dissipated. It's thinner than I was expecting. I mean, that's the kind of thing about oak being a sort of permeable living mm. entity. That the kind of the transference of flavour going both ways really is. Yeah, absolutely. And so your, your barrel will end up tasting like whiskey beer and your beer starts taking like whiskey wood so moving on to ireland to irish whiskey uh this beer uh is called 200 fathoms and uh, we've actually done a video on it before which you can see at the end of this video yeah uh, where we talked about great irish stouts that weren't guinness um and this beer is is sensational it's aged in teeling whiskey teeling. barrels yeah amazing um it's been in my oh god it just gets darker just even darker <laughs> look at that head as well it's, that's like... uh that is chestnut. Yeah, it's making me think of let there be blood. Again, it's gingerbread. It's very, very spicy, a little bit oaky. There's kind of a slight, I get a little bit of zest, a little bit of... Uh, yeah, there's a bit of lightness, like a, low, a, something. a note of lightness, citrusiness. Yeah, which, because obviously it's oxidising in the barrel because it's not a sealed thing, so that can enhance like the sherry or the 
apple kind of thing that's going on. Right. Which I get a bit more with this one. Maybe it's been in car for a bit longer. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I'm getting the burn. <laughs> getting the whiskey burn. I'm getting the burn, oh God. Yeah, if that is 10%, I wouldn't be surprised. I think it's gained some ABV. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no real oak in that one. No, the oak no, is a no. lot more subtle. Yeah. Um, which might be because it's, it's not as old a whiskey. Yeah. It's an 18 year old whiskey. That's going to have some serious oak. So this is a bit smoother. Very that spice smooth. comes through. The raisins have been cooked down with, with something seriously boozy, is essentially mm. the taste profile. The, the tone, yeah. I get from that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, Irish and Scottish casks, I think they have a yeah. huge amount in common, and it's harder to tell the difference between them. I prefer the, the mouthfeel of that. It's a lot, it's a lot, it tastes a lot thicker mm. for a start. It's um, just the consistency of it is, is, is warming and it just feels yeah. more fun. Should we skip the emergency water? I'm feeling okay. I'm, I'm all right for now. For now. Maybe later. Maybe the second video. It sounds solid. I'm not it's sure it's still drinkable. No, it's still good. It's got a hundred year lifespan. Does it? Yeah. Where yeah, does yeah. it say that? Uh, I read it on a dark web site <laughs> where I ordered it from. <laughs> so uh, you've probably all been sat there waiting for us to crack this beer. Uh, we've actually done a video on it. Again, at the end of this video, you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Uh, but the story of this is amazing. And, um, if you go to Goose Island's website, you can find it. It's called Grit and Grain, the story of this beer. Um, but the story is kind of irrelevant once you have a taste because it's just just outrageous. Speaks for itself. Yeah. So this is in bourbon barrels. Now, bourbon barrels. So bourbon has to have more, uh, has to have 51% corn, as we said. Yeah. Uh, it's also made with American white oak, which is very different to European oak in that, from what I've read, it's got more sugar uh, and more... Um, the actual oak has more sugar. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Uh, and it's also uh, charred for longer. So when they christen their barrels and they char it ready for aging the whiskey, they yeah. do it for about 45 seconds instead of about 15. So you're wow. caramelising that sugar and you're creating uh, chemicals like vanillin. Yes. Guess what that tastes like? Vanilla? Yeah, he's nailed it. Um, and you'll also get more of that sort of coconut toastiness. But, you know, the flavour profile of bourbon... Is it's way much, sweeter, isn't much, it? much sweeter. I'm a bourbon man yeah. myself. I mean, yeah. Well, me too. Can't handle the heat of these. But it's it's interesting because I guess to some extent it's a perceived sweetness because you can't yeah. distill sugar. It's not volatile. No. So it comes from something in those barrels, from the chemicals in the wood, the sugars in the wood, the magic, uh, or just the nature of those flavors that seem sweeter, or we associate them as sweeter. And I can already tell from this. Yeah. This aroma. It's wow. That smells amazing. Oily coconut. Oh. It's a bit. It's a little bit like. So, and it's, uh, I don't want to say this because it sounds offensive. But it's like I think it, it reminds me of being a kid, and I think we used to have Hawaiian Tropic Sun Lotion. Mm. Oh, it's so good! I'm doing dolphin noises. You're doing dolphin. It's got oh, yeah. loads and loads of vanilla. Mm. Uh, no oak at all. Just kind of burnt wood. Which is amazing for drying it out. It's wonderful. Yeah. It it's is. burnt wood, but it's not overpoweringly smoky no, no, no. or anything like that. It's, it, does, it does the job of the hop. Yeah, it's, it's given that dries sort off your of palate. dryness yeah. that you would get, yeah, like a hot profile. Yeah. But it's so uh, sweet and vanilla-y as well. It's mm. very, very complex. I do, I do feel like bourbon is a slightly better medium for stout. And I know there's probably a lot of brewers that will completely disagree. What you're saying is, if you're a bourbon guy... An Irish guy or a Scotch guy, mm. try and find a single distiller, a brewer that's just using barrels from a single distiller. Yeah, that's where the most exciting stuff comes from. That that picking one flavour profile, brewing a beer, either specific for it or knowing it's going to work for the beer you've brewed. Yeah, because it's kind of like it's a food. It's like a food and beer matching, except it's a beer and a whiskey yeah, matching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a it's a super complicated. It's, it's thing. like a chaser and a beer all in one. Exactly. So you have to know what you're putting together, <clears throat> guys. Don't be scared of the ABV if you are. Don't be scared if you don't like whiskey because it's all moderated by what's happening in that cask with the beer. Uh, and they are, they're just sensational. They're sensational all amazing, yeah. to be honest. Not to put a down on those guys. They're no. awesome as well. Yeah. Um, so cheers, guys. Uh, we're going to have a lie down. Uh, probably some lunch. Nah, you ain't shit. Be pissed. Yeah, cool. Right. We'll, we'll erase the cat, right? And erase the cat. Baby. Get out of it. No, Stevie. That's not a microphone friend. Come on. Let's return the microphone back.